What's good team? Welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about how to learn to code and get a job in 2024. I made a video in a similar vein not too long ago speaking about my experience nigh on three years ago and I get a lot of questions from you guys asking if the information in the video is still relevant. And it's a really good question because tech changes very quickly. An example, when I was learning to code, I was sufficiently unhinged to think I could tutor other people to learn to code. And I was helping someone enrolled in a boot camp learn React. And the boot camp was teaching them class components in React which is now massively outdated for the newer functional components. And that's just a great example of how quick the evolution is in tech. So it's good to keep the information relevant to the modern age, which is what we'll be doing in this video. There's absolutely loads of stuff to cover. And at the end, we'll even talk about the best methodologies for learning coding in general so that you can go off and become a 10x hyper developer today. If you enjoy the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons. And with that all said, let's begin this story where all good stories begin at the beginning. Chapter one, a word for the wise. So just before we dive into teaching yourself to program, as much as it sounds like an absolutely brilliant endeavor and I would recommend it to anyone, it's good to know that it is challenging to say the least. At the best of times, it's a bumpy road, so steal your nerves for the path ahead. But other than that, I'm sure you can do it. Also, it's important to mention that self-teaching in general, be it programming or anything else, is a different beast. Most of us are products of educational institutions who tell you what to learn and where to direct your attention. Self-teaching isn't like that. You have to pick your own resources from the millions of resources out there. You also have to choose a roadmap, a pathway to your chosen destination. The way I'd recommend doing this is reverse engineer. Pick the outcome that you want and find a roadmap that takes you to that destination. Don't just risk it for the biscuit, otherwise you'll lose the path and there will be no return. If you go on LinkedIn and find a job that you want to have, you'll probably see a list of technology required for that role and that's what you'll be wanting to learn and you should pick a roadmap that teaches you that information. If you want to get into full stack development or any kind of web development, this is the roadmap I would recommend pursuing. It's modern, it's up to date, it's linear to ensure that you don't get overwhelmed by the paralysis of choice that is the downfall of many self-taught developers. There are so many resources out there, it's very easy to be overwhelmed. So tunnel vision on the one that you choose and do not deviate until you cross the finish line or you decide that the resource doesn't work for you. But anyway, those are the four warnings. You are now a self-teaching master. And with that said, let's jump into chapter two, where to begin. So I started my coding journey with JavaScript doing free code camps, 300 hour curriculum. Now that is not where I would recommend you start your journey. 300 hours is nearly three months of 30 hour weeks before you can even develop something very basic and average. Instead, I would recommend starting off with HTML and CSS, specifically in this tutorial because HTML and CSS is the backbone of the internet. It's at the foundation of every good developer's skill sets. yet you can totally pick it up within three hours, have some live projects on the internet, build whatever crazy contraption or invention that you want and call yourself a developer. It's literally a hundred times faster and HTML and CSS have a much lower barrier to entry. After you've picked up HTML and CSS, then you can complete the trifecta of vanilla web development by incorporating JavaScript into the mix. And at the minute, I probably would still recommend pursuing free code camps JavaScript curriculum. It is long, but it is good too, and it's totally free. However, I should note that within the month of January, I will be releasing my own JavaScript course, which I must say will probably take the cake in only a fraction of the time. If that sounds good to you, then sign up to the newsletter because that's where it will be announced. After you've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript under your belt, that is a brilliant foundation. And the only thing I would recommend augmenting that foundation with is Git and GitHub. Git is a terminal language used for version control of code. GitHub is a cloud storage system that interacts with Git to store all of your code. It's used by pretty much every big tech corporation on the face of the planet. It's something that you absolutely have to know. Git terminal language can be learned in this guide. It's pretty simple to get it down pat. However, if you find it a bit overwhelming, totes my goats fair. And instead you can download the GitHub desktop graphic user interface or GUI. This will allow you to effectively use GitHub to version all of your code. You can start developing your GitHub activity tracker log, which is going to get you a job because you will absolutely paint it all different shades of green. It will show prospective employers how productive and determined you are. And it's a great thing to start from square one. Download the GitHub GUI or learn Git and start committing all of the code from your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript foundational learning. 
The next thing I would recommend doing on your pathway to becoming a 10x hyper mega developer is actually to stop learning and start building. It's time for projects. Specifically, I would recommend developing a web portfolio. It's pretty much an online resume. It shows some personality, some flair. You can send it to your family and friends, and it's just a great entry point that will come in handy later when we fill it up with projects to show employers. Brilliant portfolios can be developed with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript alone, so you don't need any additional knowledge. And the other reason we do a project here is to stop you falling into the other common pitfall of self-taught developers, which is tutorial hell. For those unfamiliar, tutorial hell is when you cannot code independently and you require the assistance and guidance of a tutorial or someone to walk you through the entire coding process and project. It's super common and it can be a real pain in the bum. However, we can break the cycle early by understanding the ratio of learning to doing and making sure that we're not doing just learning and we're also doing doing. Now, in saying that, that doesn't mean that tutorials are your enemy, they are your friend. And I would even recommend following this portfolio tutorial if you're just getting started with HTML and CSS. However, at the end, you want to adapt it, modify it, change it, paint it differently so it doesn't look the same. Make it your own, add your own personality and flair, gut it to its core, to its skeleton, and rebuild it from there. That can be a much easier process than beginning your own projects completely for scratch scratch. You won't have to do this forever, but just as a new developer, it's going to be easier to build a cool project if you've already laid some of the groundwork instead of having to do everything from scratch. So pick a good tutorial, find one that has a cool design that you like to follow, and then change it at the end. The other thing I'll mention about projects is that you have to deploy them. A big part of working as a software developer is actually deploying code. So if you can have it live on the internet, that's going to be infinitely better. And I'd also recommend sharing it across every social media platform on the face of the planet. There's a couple of reasons for this. A, it can help you get feedback on your work and B, it can actually be good to get you visibility to your work and show off your capabilities. Just from posting stuff to the internet, I got a job offer. And so it's something I'd recommend doing from day one. And why not tag me in it? I'd love to see what you guys come up with. You can find links to the social media in the description below should you want to do that. Chapter four, full stack development. At this point in the grand scheme of things, you are a seedling. You are new to the worlds of development, but you've still got your foundations absolutely sorted. The transition here to become a fully fledged developer is to understand the modern ways of full stack development. Full stack development incorporates two main criteria. It's front end development and back end development. Front end development is the development of user interfaces and client or user interfacing systems. And back end development is the development of everything that goes on behind the scenes that the user does not directly interface with. Together, they can be used to develop absolutely wicked applications like Facebook, make you absolute mega bucks. You'll be a billionaire in days. So it's a great skill set to have. For front end development, we're talking JavaScript frameworks. JavaScript frameworks make the development of dynamic web applications infinitely easier than using the trifecta of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript alone. And the ones I would recommend learning are React, Next.js, Svelte, and possibly also Nuxt. Specifically React and Next.js, they are the most popular JavaScript libraries out there. And that's really important to know because they will be the most beneficial for landing you your job. Once you picked up one, you can probably pick up all of them. So I wouldn't stress too hard. And I would absolutely start off with React. I personally would recommend watching this tutorial. However, you can also learn React from the Full Stack Open, Free Code Camp, or the Odin Project. All of them are great free online curriculums to teach you React. And if you really wanted to add some flair and some spice to that, I'd also throw in Tailwind CSS. It's a CSS library to make styling and designing websites infinitely easier. I absolutely love it and I would recommend learning it from day one as well. To complete the picture, we're going to throw in back-end development. Now, you can start applying for front-end jobs without this section. However, it is going to increase your odds of landing a developer role if you understand back-end development. Back-end development is designing server-side systems with CRUD operations, which is create, read, update, and delete. Often that's API endpoints, database interactions, and all that good stuff. The tech I would recommend learning is Node.js and Express because it's built off JavaScript. So you don't have to learn any other programming languages to develop server-side applications. As for databases, I'd recommend Postgres SQL, which is a SQL language. It's pretty easy to get up and running. You can even do it with a pass service, which is a platform as a service. One is Superbase, very popular, would highly recommend it. Or you could use a NoSQL database such as Firebase Firestore. 
incredibly easy to start persisting data today. And if you really wanted to go the extra mile with server-side development, I'd also recommend picking up Docker. Can feel a little bit overwhelming at first. It's totally not a necessity, but if you can suss it, it is nice to have. For learning Node.js and Express, I'd recommend this tutorial. For learning Postgres, you'd probably want to check this one out afterwards. And likewise with Firebase. Experiment with all of them, see what you like, and then just go with that. Chapter five, credibility. So at this point, you are now a fully fledged developer. Congratulations. Now, the next mighty great challenge that stands ahead of you is to actually land a job. And the first thing you need to understand as a self-taught developer is that you have no credibility. And this is going to be the single largest, greatest hindrance to you actually getting a job. Most people who pursue a software engineering qualification or computer science are accredited by definition. You need to build it alone with projects. When I got my job, I spent my whole entire interview, 90 minutes, just literally going through my portfolio and flexing all the amazing applications that I built that had a non-zero number of users. Although admittedly, they only probably had one and that was my mum. but that's something you don't have to tell them. If I didn't have a portfolio of projects to help me walk the talk and tell the prospective employer that I can do what they need me to do, then I would have flailed like a fish flopped on the floor and it just wouldn't have been a lot of fun. There's a bit of an art to picking projects to land a job. I've done a whole video on it. I totally recommend watching it. And at the end of it, you will blow the minds of all prospective employers with your amazing array of work. Chapter six, landing a job. Now to build upon the last chapter, this one is going to be specifically about the job application process. I was recently involved in the recruitment for a software engineering role. We had over 200 applicants and it taught me a lot. From the process, I learned that nearly 95% of all applications are diabolically bad, atrocious, and absolutely appalling. Take heart in this because that means that there's probably only about 10 candidates with whom we will proceed the application process with and you need to be one of them. To ensure that you don't become a statistic like everybody else in this process, the first thing you need to nail is the resume. The most common mistake people make with a resume is they try to add too much flair. Your resume needs to be clear and predictable. We don't want any colors, we don't want any funky formatting, it just needs to have the keywords emboldened that show your skill set to the employer in a fraction of a second because that's how long they're going to be looking at your resume. I'd recommend literally just taking these templates, there's two available to you depending on how fanciful you wish to be modify them to your pleasing and just go from there. Also, they're not allowed to be more than one page unless you have more than 10 years of work experience. If you have less experience than that, then everything goes on one page. It's that simple. Number two is cover letters. You probably be submitting quite a few of these. I was probably doing anywhere between three to 10 a day when I was trying to get my job. Now the secret to writing a good cover letter is to not write a good cover letter. We're actually going to leverage AI for this process. However, it's worth noting that if you have poor prompting in the generation of your cover letter, then you'll get a pretty terrible cover letter. So to save you from this, use this website. You basically submit your resume to it, you submit the job posting, and it maps your skill set to the requirements of the job in a nicely formatted cover letter, it speaks a bit to your experience, and then you can just tweak it a tiny bit and submit it and bada bim bada boom, you could have a job. The last tip I have for landing a job, and this is the one that I literally think actually got me my job, how to really separate yourself from the pool of other candidates, is to message recruiters or whoever has posted the job on LinkedIn. Slide into the DMs, send them this exact message saying, I saw this job, I'd love to have an informational interview as I feel like I would be a great candidate to learn more about the role. The reason this works so well is because no one wants to screen 200 candidates. You'll probably get ghosted a whole lot, but in the instances where you don't and you actually get an informational interview, this is a free interview and if you can show that you're a cool person, you've got a great personality and you're a bit of fun to have around and that you can do the job, you've given them every reason not to continue with the recruitment process with anybody else and just hire you for the job. This is absolutely essential to separate yourself from the rest and if you're not doing it then you better start today. And with that said, we can jump into the final chapter, chapter seven, which is how to memorize code. Now, the biggest mistake I see people making when they're trying to learn to code is that they want to memorize everything. This is actually wrong. Don't go about rote learning code. It doesn't work. End of story. We're going to close that book and put it away and never look at it again. Instead, what you do if you're learning through project based learning, which is how I would recommend learning to program is when you develop anything, the first thing you have to do is comment it like there's no tomorrow. If you're following a tutorial and you've written out a function from the tutorial, comment out what the function does and anything interesting that the tutor has said about the function. Riddle your code with comments like it's a disease. And then the second thing you have to do is submit it to GitHub. 
store everything. You need to catalog everything you touch. You will never memorize everything there is to know about programming, but if you can have an amazing catalog inside your GitHub of examples of how to do everything, then you will be the most productive developer on the face of the planet. So comment everything, save it to your GitHub, and understand how to reference it. Whenever I go to build a project, if I can't remember something, I've typically done it before, I can just go to my GitHub. Since I've got so many comments, I can figure out how to do it immediately and I can implement it in any new application as I please. The other brilliant thing about this process is that you will naturally learn the things that you do most commonly. So if you do this a couple of times with a particular technology, the example for me is when I was initially developing server-side applications with Express, I'd often reference my notes, now I just build them from scratch because I've naturally memorized it. I have not, however, naturally memorized regex because I don't do it a lot. Talk about a waste of time, not to mention that now the best thing you can do with ChatGPT is get it to develop regex for you. That's just something I wanted to cover because I feel like a lot of people do themselves a disservice trying to memorize everything. This is a much more natural process that I would recommend adopting today. And that's pretty much it, my friends. Just before I go, there's a couple more things I just wanted to mention. The first one is that it is challenging. I totally acknowledge that. It's not going to be an easy process. However, you should know there is a huge community here to support you. If you're ever feeling a bit lost, a bit discouraged, join the Discord community, flick me a message, and we'll do everything we can to help you on your journey. The second thing is that there is a roadmap to guide you through every step of the way, give you all the resources you need to succeed. Everything is in one place. I'd keep that as your holy Bible and stick to it. The third thing is obviously to share your progress online. Tag me in it, we'd love to see it. And it just builds a great community so that you don't feel like you're doing it alone. Everything is way easier if we just work together to get the job done. Bob the Builder. And finally, if you've enjoyed the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much for your support. Leave a comment down below if you have any additional recommendations for learning to code. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Small James Web Development Roadmap. Link is in the description down below or dive straight in with these videos.